And there, there, there it is. I'm doing scheduled go lives now, so I'm not sure how the two things uh, do that. But they did it. It looks like we're live, and so hey, we're gonna do our little magic experience today. Today we're gonna focus on some tricky things. Uh, trick cards are the topic at hand. A couple reasons why. Uh, one is this over at theconjure.com. Do I have a graphic for conjure.com? I used to have one. I have a logo that would pop up there. But over at conjure.com, I'm having a sale on my trick decks. I have something I call the card shark combo. You get three decks, bicycle, matching backs, all with written instructions and a video instruction from yours truly. All three of these, 20 bucks when you buy the card shark combo. That's just for this weekend. So if uh, if trick cards are on your mind, well, maybe you could consider this. And look, I got some other, got some other fun new trick things that we'll talk about as the time goes on. But we're going to open this session with a little demonstration of uh, tricky decks. So we're going to talk about the stripper deck to begin. And this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the better trick decks because can use it as a regular deck. You can play cards with it, you can cheat cards with it, and I'll give you a, a demonstration of that right now. Let me take a quick peek into, okay, we're there. All right, so this is the stripper deck. It's it's safe for work, it's not a stripper, it's a, it's, it's a technical term for the deck, a tapered pack or a wizard deck. And uh, as mentioned, the nice thing is it looks like a regular deck of cards. They're all there. They're all different. And again, you can play cards with this. For this, I'm just going to do the obligatory pick a card trick. I do have to do at least one of these where a card is selected, part of the YouTube terms. So that'll be our selected card. I really don't know what it is, but I will when we look in the monitor. It's the There it is. Ace of Hearts. It doesn't matter if I see it. I'm not actually going to try and find the card. Well, I'm not going to look for the card. I'm going to find it. I'm just, I'm not going to look, look for it. Well, that would make it but shuffle it in there. I'm going to find it by cutting the deck. I'm going to cut the deck in exactly half. It's 26 on each side, 26 on the left, 26 on the right, one cut. I feel like I'm a little bit off there. Just, yeah, still I'm off by one. That's pretty close. This is almost exactly half. You know this if you do the math, and here's how I do the math. If you put all the red cards, <clears throat> yeah, that's all the red ones. All the red ones on one side, that way you know it's half. All the black cards on, yeah, oh, what do you know? Except that one red card I missed on the black side. <clears throat> ah, I'm getting verklempt. Trick's so good, it verklempt me. Verklempt me. Sure. Okay. This is one of this is one of really dozens of tricks you can do with the stripper deck. As mentioned, when you buy these things, you get printed instructions to give you multiple routines with them, as well as video instruction from yours truly. I show you how to do the things. I'm looking for my chat here. Uh, I pop it out. Let me pop it out the chat. I see you guys showing up. I thank you for being here. And, uh, you know, I had hoped to have these things, again, visible on my screen, but I just can't get that together yet. Chat, I'm working on getting you on this screen with me, but our second attempt has failed. Maybe the third one will uh, be a success. Speaking of the third one, I did a poll uh, two days ago about when our next live would be. Some of you said Thursday, some of you said Saturday. Friday didn't get much love, but look, I'm going to double up on the lives this week. This is a forewarning that we're going to be doing a second live Saturday, and I think I put 10 a.m. Check the poll. Wherever the poll is on Saturday, I'll be live again. Uh, hey, guys, save your questions. Let me get through this capitalism. Let me get through my agenda here, and then we'll talk about our uh, anything you want to talk about. I'm going to hang around for, really, I have no agenda today beyond doing a couple card tricks and then doing whatever you guys want to talk about. But let me finish talking about that. To do this, I'm going to need some help. I'm going to bring Siri into play here. I see Siri subtly displaying my YouTube site. What we'll need is a card. Let's see if Siri's with, it, with us. Hey, Siri, tell us a joke. A fly says to a human, do you have any f Says no. And the fly leaves. I comes back the next day and says, do you have any f Says no. I comes back the next day and says, do you have any f Says, I already told you no twice. 
If you come back and ask me again, I'm going to swat you with a newspaper. The next day the fly comes back and says, Do you have a newspaper I can borrow? Says, no. I says, then do you have... OMG. That's the longest Siri joke, and I didn't even get the punchline. I was apathetic after about 12 seconds. Sorry we all had to sit through that. I was hoping it'd be worth it, but boy was I wrong. Really all I need is this, Siri to name a card. This tricks with works with any card name, so let's just see if this can take less than a minute. Hey Siri, pick a card. Okay, it's the five of diamonds this time. Hey Siri, repeat that. It's the five of diamonds this time. So this is why we need Siri, a random card. And any card named will be the card. Look, there is one. Any card named will be the card that is upside down in this deck. This trick, by far, by far, is my all-time favorite card trick. It is a trick deck card trick. So this is a guy who loves sleight of hand, telling you his favorite trick is a trick deck trick. This is the Ultra Mental deck, or better known as the Invisible deck, but it was introduced to the magic world from uh, Joe Berg in the early 1900s. Let's just do it one more time because we can. What's up, Jason? Good to see you guys. Uh, hey, Siri, pick a card. I picked the King of Spades. Hey, Siri, repeat that. I picked the King of Spades. And again, it works with every card, any card, every time, any card name will be upside down. Look, there's one card upside down. Siri said King of Spades. And so, yeah, you buy this thing, you get an app, it works with any card, you, you program the app, and, and that's a lie. It's a trick deck. It's the invisible deck. The deck does most of the work. It's not like there's any skill to it. Just uh, a little simple math with this one actually gets the job done. But this, this is going to complete our trick deck demonstration. And as I mentioned earlier at conjure.com, do I have some kind of a graphic or something for that to show? Is that, does that ever happen in my universe where I'm, nah, not there. <laughs> I'm just not that professional enough. But visit me at conjure.com. Those are on sale for 20 bucks for the weekend. All right, let's do something new. We're going to do something new, and then I'm going to do something. Uh, I'll do whatever you guys want. Well, I'm going to hang out here till about 4.30 today. Looks like we'll have about 15, 20 minutes to do some Q&A. So uh, I got a package. Let's, let me tell you this story. I've been, uh, did you guys follow me on these places? Where am I pointing? Over here. I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe. Pardon the microphone. Subscribe and follow. Those are the YouTube mantras. So I did a nicety for uh, Alakazam Magic, which is a fine uh, purveyor of all things magical. They're from the UK. It's a UK uh, magic distributor, producer. They were kind enough to reciprocate my kindness with some kindness of their own. I, I just got these things yesterday. I'm very excited about everything in my hand. I'm going to show you one of the things. Uh, I, I opened this last night. I started playing with it, and uh, I think it's got some potential. Certainly for me, and let me let me just give this some unsolicited testimonial here. I'm talking about this thing called the Doodle Queens. The Doodle Queens. Now, and you've already subbed. Thank you. Agent wants to see plastic surgery. We could do that. We could do that later. Let me do this. Let me do this as a kindness to you and to me and the fine folks at Alakazam. So as a grandfather of three lovely uh, daughter granddaughters, I have three daughters as well as well. This trick, which is the Doodle Queens, seem like a perfect fit. These queens are, they, they appear to be uh, hand-drawn queens, something like a child might draw. You only get four of them. I'm going to bring you down here so you can see what the trick looks like, okay? Let's right, see if I can get through this. And again, it's one day old, so I'm still crafting the moves. I'm crafting the presentation, but here's how I would do this, all right? So four queens, en français, un, deux, Four. Here's what happens. I only know a couple tricks with four cards. One of them is you twist the cards. And when you twist the cards, Di Vernon said you could make cards turn over. See? The hat, one of the cards, one of the queens turned upside down. I'll do that again for the slower students. I mean, it's almost 420. Oh, some of the... Never, <clears throat> I digress. One slow spin, that's one, two. That's two queens that have turned over. Two queens that have turned over. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do the Queen of Clubs 
I'll do this one. I'll do this one in slow motion and and visibly. Here it goes. Slow motion and vis visibly. The queen of clubs. I digress. That's the sneakiness that lets me turn down the spades, and that's all four queens upside down. Truth be told about this trick, the easy part is getting them to turn over. Yep, we're going there. The hard part of the trick, what's the grip? What's the grip for this? Is it this? Oh, what is that? It's is it this? <laughs> I forgot the grip for the thing. Must be this. Oh yeah, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, this and this. Now we have four regular queens. One, two, three, four regular queens. So I need a segue there to get from the cartoons into the ladies, something meaningful and groovy, but that is the doodle queens. Which, you know, if you're going to do a packet trick that has a transformation, why not do one that can have some meaning to it? You know, something like, my granddaughters drew me these cards, which is maybe a little more appealing to having cards with, I don't know, they make packet tricks with all kinds of weird things printed on cards. But if you're going to print something weird, make it kind of emotionally appealing. And that is Doodle Queens. That completes my scheduled agenda today. We promoted Conjure.com, got some trick card demos in. We promoted the sale. We talked about Alakazam, our new fa favorite magic dealer. Thank you, Peter, if you're watching this. I appreciate you. And now we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I, I did see plastic surgery mentioned. I'll get that out here. We can do that if you want. Even set up. It's not, but I'll set it up while we do that. Is there such a thing as four regular queens? Not in New Orleans, there's not. All the queens are crazy here. <laughs> How did I do that? Very well. I must be the best grandfather ever. Hey, Goldbug. They do okay, you know. They do okay in the grandpa department. I do okay. What, what were the questions I missed? I see, I see everyone asking questions. The, uh, what is the most expensive deck of cards I have? You know, this is uh, probably the Verts. I'm not a crazy card person, but these, these run about 25 bucks, which you can see I've destroyed this deck. Put a damn, I put a revolution gimmick in it. You can't even see that, but yeah, so the Verts. Deck's about worn out. I don't buy a lot of vanity cards, just some. Um, Dude, I thought about doing the cups and balls today, but I feel like I've done it so much recently on my streams that I was not going to do that. And uh got a request for further than that. You know what? I haven't done further than that in such a further time. I don't know that I can remember the setup for that. Fortunately, it's in my tutorial playlist, so you can go go look at the tutorials and uh yeah, I know. Three, I got three of them, Jason. Three, three, three grandkids. Billy, you got some original Jerry's? Let me introduce you to my email address. Please send me a line and we'll talk. How do I only have 240,000 subs? You say that, I say, how in the heck do I have 40, 240,000 subs? I'm glad you think that I should have more and we'll work on that as time goes on. Maybe we'll get to millions and millions. I'm gonna goof around these with these cards while we're talking. Here's a good question. Do I stream on Twitch? I started to do that, okay? I started to stream on Twitch and uh, I built up a pretty good start, but I think it's overwhelming. Like I've got TikTok I'm busy with, YouTube Shorts, the YouTube main platform. I spread a little love on Instagram. I got a Discord and a website that I run. I just can't find the time to do Twitch right now, but I'd like to. I'd like to. This is a regular deck. These aren't trick decks. Further than that is one of the great self-working card tricks. Yeah, I, you know, I picked, the, I picked those tricks for a reason, and that's a good one. Created by Stuart James, who's one of the great minds of magic, of uh, creative, especially card magic, close-up magic. I've been performed on TV, uh, on local shows. Let me see if I can get this to work. This is loosely related to some material I was talking about this week. This is not in my active repertoire, but it ties in well with the Pharaoh Shuffle. Talked about the Pharaoh Shuffle. It was an ace if you missed it. 
So, okay, aces, we'll go for the aces. Where's my camera? Let me go right about here. It's number two. Just a little shake. All right, part of the floor show. Part of the floor show. Ace number three. This is why, <laughs> this is why I don't do this tr trick. That. And there we go. Ace number four, secretly disguised as the six of clubs. Oh, I didn't do this trick. Let me just use a little magic to fix that mistake. And that is LaPaul's Gymnastic Aces. That could have gone much worse. That could have gone much worse. Yeah, here's the thing about Twitch. I game. I game. I'm I'm an avid Hearthstone player. I play collectible uh, card games, digital Hearthstone. Hearthstone. And I also play online poker. Both of those things I could do on Twitch. But... When I do those things, it's my downtime. It's my decompressed time. It's my time to turn my brain off and not do magic and not do internet and just kind of do. So I'm just saving that time for me right now. Part of the floor show. Stick with me. I got all the bad jokes for you. Let me enlighten you guys to this piece of magic. Maybe you'll learn something here. Let me turn this off. Is that right? Not working. We'll talk about the uh, I'll talk about what I just did and I'll do this because I'm talking about the Pharaoh shuffle this week if you haven't seen the gun trick this is a great trick and uh, the, it based help let's just do the gun trick for those who haven't seen it I'll use the aces which they uh, you know what they call these in Las Vegas anybody know anybody know what they call these in Las Vegas they call them the aces <laughs> they're also referred to as bullets so let me just get you to pick one of the Pick one of the targets. I'm going to use a bullet, but for now, I'm just going to stop randomly. Y'all remember that card. That's a random, and that really was a random selection. I'll just take the big bullet, which I load into the deck, which now looks like a gun. We have a gun, we have a bullet, we have a target, and we have one shot, one card shot out from the middle. That's the two of clubs. That's the target card, and that is the gun trick which I taught yesterday on my weekly Wednesday magic lesson. Along with that, I taught this shuffle. I taught the Pharaoh shuffle, which is the act of weaving cards together at the ends to shuffle them in this condition. I discussed a technique for that, and I discussed uh, on the member section, and I should mention this as well, if you're, if you're a member, I added a tutorial to that for, uh, where is it? Boop. Nope, that's not the one we want. <laughs> nope. There's the member graphic. I added an extra tutorial where uh, it's cutting cutting the aces. We did the da -da -da, Marlowe's estimation aces. So it's kind of been kind of been Pharaoh week for me. Marlowe's estimation aces, the gun trick. And if you're interested in these, where's the over here? If you're interested in these advanced tutorials, it's the conjurer level. It's five bucks a month. I got like fifteen or sixteen events. And you also get access to members only live events. And if you want to go top tier, you get one on one teaching. So I wanted to mention that today for those of you unaware of it. And we also have a Discord server going on for the members. All that gibbery jab out of the way. Let me teach you this. Uh, let me teach you this one. And then Aaron wants to see a showstopper. I've had plastic surgery sitting here. It's my three card money routine. That's a showstopper, I think. Let me explain the gymnastic aces briefly. This is Paul LaPaul's gymnastic aces. As, as you apparently put the aces into the deck, you'll want to secretly control them to the top of the pack. Now, I'm using a multiple shift here. It's a secret action that I'm not going to discuss. There's a lot of ways you can get four of a kind to the top of the deck. Maybe the best way is just to stick them there ahead of time. So, uh, Randa, catch me on catch me on the live this weekend, and I'll go through that again. I'm not going to redo that right now. It's a little involved for that trick. So, look, we've got the four aces on the top. Uh, I hold back one, so I do a slip cut to keep one ace on top as I pharaoh shuffle a small parcel into the larger parcel. So see how that small parcel's woven inside? Aces are right here. If I grip here with, with the right tension and give a shake, just a sharp shake, that's going to make a, the top card flop out of there. There is a feel to this, but it's not like it's not it's not rocket science. It's not like it's hard to do. It just takes a little time to. If you can get the Pharaoh, you can get these cards shaken out of there like that. 
And the last ace is here, right? But I, I miss it. So I, I miss the last one, and I do this just to add some drama to the effect instead of doing four in a row. So what I'll do is gesture here. I usually will do a, t a top change to affect the transformation. Uh, you might know different card changes, like you might do the shape shifter or, hell, I don't know what you do. Do any card change you want to change that last miss or just produce four in a row. But this is Paul the Paul's great gymnastic aces. And whether you're producing maybe some selected cards or four of a kind, it's just a fun production. Gardner wants to know where I learn all these skills, LMAO. Books. I learn from books. Uh, I've been blessed with some great magic mentors in my life, but uh, blessed is, uh, I, I, I sought the information. Let's just say that for the better part of 20 years, I pursued magic like a fiend, like a fiend. And I still do on some levels, although now my interests are kind of pulled into this, the YouTube algorithm or the TikTok algorithm, or how do you run OBS software? Uh -huh. How do you make audio good? Okay, Aaron, I hear you. He wants the showstopper. See what you think about this one. And we're wondering, wow, can a showstopper be done with just three cards? Uh-oh, let's find out. Three cards, and it's not even a trick, really. It's more of a, let's call this a, a game. A little, a little game of hanky-poo. Yeah, it's a cheating game. The black's for me, the red's for you. And hey, diddle diddle, she's the one in the middle. So you know the scam here, the three card Monty. Yeah, it's the game you can't win. No matter where you bet, you'll lose. Yep, you'll lose. Let me give them a mix here. What do you think? What do you think? Some people might guess the bottom. Eh, you saw me put it in the middle. So some people will guess the middle. That's generally a bad bet. So if you know it's not on the bottom and not in the middle, others would say the sure bet of the top, but that's a bet that's sure to lose because it's not on the top, it's not on the bottom, it's not in the middle, it's just not. Not until the dealer needs it, and then look, it comes right back in a flash. Now this can be done with blinding speed. I'll prove it right now. Keep your eye on the queen. Keep your eye on the queen. See if you can... See the exact second it jumps back to this hand, leaving a nine on the table. Do that again. That felt a little sloppy. Watch as I put the queen to the table. It jumps to the hand, and over here there's a nine. But is that a showstopper? Nah, let's get to the showstopper part. Here's the, here's the skit. Here's the skinny. The queen, let me exaggerate this, is adjustable. Can you see it? It's a little, here, let me just, if I pull on the edges, you see how it gets a little bit longer? Yeah, it's a longer queen. Alternatively, you squeeze it on the ends and then it gets wider on the sides. That's a weird alternative, but that's not the, that's not the best way to cheat. No, the best way, the best way to cheat the Monty is this. Get yourself a queen that's just a little bit smaller. As Jason said, there's no normal queens in New Orleans. <laughs> this is definitely not a normal queen. That's the secret to the three card Monty. Hey, don't tell I told. I, I get in trouble for things like this. But yeah, you don't see that. You don't see that every day. I mean, I do, but that's my life. I guess this is a good part to good time to re-mention my membership section, as that section does contain the tutorial for the trick we just saw. That's right. I said, Doug, you gotta bring the value to the member section at least once a month. And this month it was plastic surgery, although I have uploaded several things this month. I think that is one of the top tier values. It's a working routine that's been in my repertoire for over 20 years. It was originally published by John Rockerbomber in his Modus Operandi magazine. And Mike Powers does sell the routine with the cards. If you visit Mike's mallofmagic.com, yeah, mall, mall, like the shopping mall, mallofmagic.com, you can get the cards, you can get Mike's routine, my routine, everything you need to do it. But if you just want to learn it, you can join my YouTube and learn it there. All right, into that commercial. G 
<laughs> the genius can't understand this trick. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you, gut buster. Ooh. There's no, there's no rough and smooth in that, Mr. Bell. Oh, look, the chat is on the screen. We don't even know how it happened, but the chat has arrived on the screen. Look at this. I did something, but I'm not, I'm not sure how. Maybe it's been happening the whole time, but I was too busy on the other, on the other view. Uh, someone asked if I got to hang out with David Copperfield after the show when I was in Vegas. My experience was this backstage. Uh, David's David's there backstage meeting and greeting. I got my turn to meet and greet. And uh, hi, Mr. Copperfield. I'm a magician too. And he went like this, and just ignored me. He didn't care. So no, we didn't talk. Can I do a prop trick? Okay, that's an interesting request. Huh? Let me think about it. I have props. I'm so I so want to do my new thing, but I'm not. I just got I, here's the one. Here's coming soon. The trick no one sees anymore. The legendary jumping peg paddle. Yes, I, it's not my face is in the screen. That's that's why. You'll see that probably next week. That's a fun. That's a fun prop. These, these are super proppy. This is the one. This is the one that uh, I'll show you. The one that did me good on YouTube a couple months ago. I'll explain this as I do it. You might have seen these. You'll see a lot of uh, Randa's like just firing off the requests. Yes, I can do a classic pass. I won't do flush brush today. The ropes. The ropes. These I like because they work so well for social media. Because when you, when you watch the trick straight on, that's the best angle to make it look like the rings link. I have to admit that looks look. People think they're magnets sometimes, or maybe there's like. Let me explain what it is. It's the sound. See when you get the sound click when you click them when you cl click them just right, it'll make a make the illusion that the rings link together and. That's only good if you watch from the front, which is why it's good for the social media. Yeah, if I turn to the side view, you could tell. Like they're not really, see? It's just that when I click them, it, it's the clicking that makes it sound like they go, I mean, you have to admit, that looks like they're linked, right? They're not, but it, it looks good from the front. So it's a prop trick. Once you know that, you could do all kinds of things. This one does have a fancy ending that I'm not going to, I'm having a hard time just keeping this in frame, but that's the mystery of the linking rings, and I'm going to quit while I'm ahead on that one. Things could go wrong at that point, and I, it's EMI, I digress, we're done with that piece. I request the prop trick. Cringe. <laughs> Uh, do I sell this for the members? You know what? I'm working on a deal with Vanishing Ink. I hope to be an affiliate with Vanishing Ink in the near future and offer their product line, and I will have a much deeper resource to offer my members and anyone interested. <clears throat> I'll gently do some passes down here while we talk more. Someone wanted to see a classic pass. It's never a good idea, in my opinion, just to say, hey, show me your pass, because they'll, they'll just burn you and you'll be caught. I'll just do this with the aces since they're in the deck already, face up in the deck. So this is, this is a Herman style invisible, invisible turnover pass or a Herman pass. This is probably my favorite action because it can be done a little slower. This is not the best angle. For, let me, I'm trying to find a good angle. It's really over here under this, but let me drop these in the middle. So for a classic style pass, I'll, I'll usually add a riffle into it or maybe a dribble. So if I, was, if I was to do a dribble pass, it would look like this. And what else is there? There's a red pass, like put your card back and as you apparently close the deck, Classic pass, worst for the camera, but just a, a straight classic would be this. And note that I'm sitting down. Like if I really wanted to show this best, good thing I wore pants today. <laughs> I'd probably want to give you this view. So I'll, I'll try and do a good classic pass for you. Drop them into the deck. That's about half the deck on top of the aces. 
That's no cover, classic bet. There you go. That's what it looks like. Hope you're happy. Uh, I for a card control more often than not, I use the M MP side steal. So most people are familiar with side steals. Here's the action on the MP. It comes out. It goes into a tenkai palm and then is shifted to the top. And this is an effort to avoid removing the hand from the deck. So again, I'd have a card peaked, get a break below it as I make a joke and divert the audience's eyes from the deck, push it into a into a tenkai, and then bring it to the top. I'll be doing some teaching on that move in the near future. It's a buried a buried method for the side steal that I enjoy, and we will be talking about that on the YouTube in the near future. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Rhonda, here's what I think about the pass. I think I've been practicing it for 30 years and still don't feel like I got it. So, you know, and, and here's the thing I also think about the pass. Everyone is going to do it a little bit differently. So if, if I teach you how I do it, it might not help you at all. But if you learn from a hundred different guys, you'll probably find two or three of them that will have the right stuff. So my advice for learning the pass, that. And uh, Salamaka, I will not be talking about Derek Delgadio's beautiful shuffle. Um, just no. <laughs> I, uh, je parle français un petit peu. That's the only other language I speak of. Yeah, uh, Penn and Teller, I saw them in Biloxi a couple years ago, and because of that, I didn't go see them in Las Vegas this year. But if I go back, I hope to get the chance to see them a little bit closer. A little bit closer? Something like that. Yeah, and if you wanna if you wanna research this in the interim, this was published in the New Tops. In, in particular, the easiest resource is the Marlowe Mint books. Marlowe in New Tops what it looks like and again I would never have someone burn this but say they peaked the four of diamonds if you were going to burn it here's what you would see so but look no way no way am I having my audience stare at that I'm gonna you know I'm gonna take your eyes away first thing I do when I do a side steal is this I say they stop look at the card remember what it is here's my next move here's the next move relax let's talk for a minute we're not concentrating on the deck at all. Now, after I got you relaxed, now the hands come together. Then I execute that Marlowe position side steal. But only after I've relaxed you, and again, I get that break right away, and then relax and talk and joke. And what's your name? And oh, that's interesting. And now we side steal. That's the biggest lesson I can give you at all. As John Carney taught us, and I think he was echoing the sentiments of giants before him, the slights are the safety net for when the misdirection fails. Let's say it again together. The slights are the safety net for when the misdirection fails. All right, no more pass talk. I'm passing out from the pass talk. What else is there? Yeah, learn the fundamentals and apply your own style. That's the only way it works. You could be a copycat if you'd like. It doesn't seem to be the road to greatness. And if the road to greatness is not your intent, why get, why get on the road? Uh, Solomaka, I don't I do not do the truffle shuffle well enough to even execute it on camera. I would not insult Derek Delgadio by executing his wonderful technique poorly. I've done so before. I make bad choices sometimes, but not today. So uh Data Mask, is cardistry good for making your act better? Well, that's a great question. I'm gonna wrap up on this question, okay? So Oh, Keller was a copycat. Woo. We have, we have tension and drama. Yes, Oliver, I keep this on my desk. I keep the pocket size Bible version nearby. If you put it in front of my face, it'll find it. All right, so what are we wrapping up in? 
Here's the question. Is cardistry good for making your act better? This will be our final question. The answer is, I don't know. You find out. Who am I to tell you what it is to make your act better? If someone had told Penn and Teller that exposing magic in a public forum is a horrible idea, we might not have a Penn and Teller. And speaking of them, if someone had told Piff the Dragon not to put on a dragon suit, we wouldn't have him. If, t if someone had told David Blaine not to mumble when he performs, maybe we don't have David Blaine. Maybe there's no Doug Henning and so on and so on. So the most important thing you could do is answer your own questions. Will cardistry make your act better? Mm -hmm. Will it? Find out. Does that make sense? So Lamaka is not listening. We discussed the favorite card control and we've just discussed the most important thing really in art, but certainly in magic, but art in general. Y'all find a point of view. Find a way to express yourself through your medium, whether it's card tricks, coin tricks, minimalism, juggling, or jokes. Find a unique point of view, present that to your audience, and you're going to be on the path to where you want to be if you want to be a strong performer. And as I answer this question, Oliver just wants to know how you put together a magic show. Bro, when, you see, when I know that, you'll be able to buy my ticket to a showroom in Las Vegas, and I hope to make that happen for you in the upcoming year. Uh, but the short answer is this. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Figure those out. Beginning, middle, end. Three things. All right, guys, let's wrap it up, huh? Or should we not? Uh, yeah, uh, no. yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up. I, I would like the last point to resonate. I think we could talk about more things, but I'd like you to remember this. Find a point of view. If you'd like to talk more, join me Saturday. I'm going to schedule a live. It should be at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and uh, maybe I'll see you then. But as far as this goes, I'm going to thank you. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate your time, your energy. We had some good questions today. Hopefully, we've grown a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.